bit of a nightmare, bit of a nightmare. Look what we've got. Oh, dearie me. So, uh, yeah, the 107 has had a fight with the curb and the curb won. Uh, really, really good hit, this one. This is the footage. So as you could see from that, it was a pretty big impact. Um, and that shoved the wheel back. It's damaged the rim beyond repair, as I thought I might get it fixed, but it's beyond repair. You've got a big gap at the front there. It's huge and a little tiny gap at the back. Now then, it turns out it's bent the beam. It's damaged the wheel bearing. That's the gap there, bigger gap on that side. Yeah, so it's pretty bad. So, impact, the back of the car has drifted out on the wet road and took a right hit into the side of the, the wheel. It's damaged all the wheel rim, but worst of all, it's actually shoved the suspension, the beam on the back, it's pushed it in. So I'm gonna to have to replace the beam on the car. Not the end of the world, been online, managed to pick a beam up from the breakers yard. Just been and collected it. I've got a newer model, I've got a 2013 beam, they're all the same, they're all the Mark 1, uh, goes on the AGO, the C1, 107, so we're going to swap it over, um, this is 2008 this model, so it's a newer beam, it's got a newer beam, newer rear wheel bearings, uh, yeah, you know, hey, we might as well get the newest one we can. So we've got to swap it all over, uh, which is taking out the brake lines, um, swapping over the ABS sensors and obviously the big beam on the back. So let's crack on, see how we get on. Jack it up, get the wheels off, that's the first thing. This is the angle that really shows it the most, is from the back, you can just see the line of the car and the wheel, how it's just all skewed out. It's just not in line at all. Fortunately, we've got the pit, so it's gonna make life slightly easier. Uh, let's uh, let's get it up in the air, get the whole thing on. Now I need to obviously jack the car up but not get it on the rear beam so we've got to support it on the body. We don't want to get anything there that's going to get in the way when we're actually dropping this off so the further down we can get it the better. Okay, so we're up. We're up in the air and we've got plenty of room to get at stuff. We've got to get at the, got a brake line over here. We've got the shock absorber bolts to remove. Drop it, get the springs, the handbrake cables. I've got to come off. Not only has it smashed the, the rim, but you can also hear the wheel bearing. It's, it's damaged that as well. Let's get this drum off to start with. Oh no. Shared me a bit off, look. Bugger. Come on, to the end, just clean off it. Second time lucky, I've got a 3 8 adapter with a bigger bit in it. Let's give this one a go. It's going to shift it, this is, I know it is. Oh, she's a tight one. Gotcha. That played hard to get, didn't it? Finger on the back. Push, twist. Pop the spring out. Get them safe. Same with this side. Finger on the back. Push, twist. Spring comes away. It's just a little clip. Shoes are loose. Get your pliers. Pull. 
way it comes, feed that spring out the bottom, that way up. Sometimes if these are no good, you can use a pair of side cutters to, on these springs to really get hold of it and, and pull it and it makes it a lot easier. So this one's the next one, it's the little one. Uh, and then you've got this top spring, so I can grab it here and then just pull it out. Okay. So that's that one. Oops, I'll just drop that down, but anyway. That, so that's gonna sit in there. We can leave this attached to that for now. All we've got to do is release this handbrake. So again, with your side cutters, you put it into the spring gently, push the spring, hold that, push the spring back, bite it so it grabs hold of it, and then you can pull that out of there and then let go and it comes back. There's your brake shoe out, and that's that way round. Look. Put that safe. So if you were putting some new brake shoes in, the only thing you're going to do here is just release that by pulling it out like that. That spring there comes out like that and your new brake shoes up comes complete. So we put it back in again, we just hook that back in there and then just pull that and drop it back into that, into where it comes from there like that. Job done. Handbrake now has got a little clip, a little suicide clip here we call it, and if we can squeeze that with the pliers and push it through. So put a bit of leave on that one. There we go, that's that out of the way. Right, now we can get this handbrake cable out without too much to do. So we've got the ABS sensor wire now that's holding us in place. Let's pop that out of that flip there. That's that one out. Good brake part to come off. I shall take that out with the whole axle and then swap that over in a minute. So the next thing I'm going to do is clamp this flexible brake hose and undo from here and then remove the hose from, from the axle there. I'm going to do the same both sides as one of these hoses either side. So when clamping brake hoses and you're not using a, a hose tool, if you get your mole grips but don't do it all the way up like that Give yourself a gap, and then you're not going to crush the hose completely. There we go. Bang like that, straight onto the hose, and now we can undo this, knowing that we're not going to lose all the brake fluid out of the, out of the cylinder. So we've got a 10 millimeter brake hose spanner. There it goes. Free. And then we can grab hold of this clip. A wiggle. Oh, cycle, something. There we go. Sometimes you just get a better grip with these. So that's out of the way. And now that hose should just come through like so. And there it is. So that's the hose out of the way. Yeah, so let's whack these uh, two bolts which are holding these shock absorbers into the bottom arms there. And that's, that's what's holding the axle up. So uh, we whiz them out, they're like 14 millimeter bolts. We'll just taz them out, and as it comes to the end, you'll see the axle drop when the bolt comes out. When we do the other side, I'll put it on a jack and just take the tension out of it. Bingo, there she goes. And we'll do this one, we'll just put the jack under just to take the weight, because uh, we don't want it to just everything fall into bits when, when this bolt comes out. It's the only one that's holding it up now. So we'll whiz that out. A little bit tight, a little bit rusty. Put a bit of lube on the bolts if they're uh, if they're too rusty. That'll just help it come out. There we go. Just drop it down on the jack. Beautiful. Now this axle's hanging. We can just give it a wiggle and pull them springs out. There's absolutely nothing holding them in, but the, the you know just the tension in the rubbers. There we go. That's one out. 
get that out of the way same with the other side give it a little shake a little wiggle and out it comes now it's time to get these two main bolts out these are 17 millimeter heads and we're going to take these out it's the only thing really that's holding this axle up now uh, but it's quite stiff in there it's quite tight so they're not, it's not just going to fall out on you but we'll whiz those out and pull them through that's one you saw everything move a little wow, bit there it's ready to go and we'll do the same with the other side. Right. Get the helper in just to hold it up. And that now should. I don't know how, but it's coming out. <laughs> yeah. So now the axle's off, all we're going to do is take out the brake line, this side, brake line, this side, and swap it over to the other one, which we now have behind us. So that's what we've got, just to change those bits out of This one looks lovely. It's, you can tell it's a lot newer. So we'll just whiz these brake lines out again. Just tap them up. This is straight out of the back of the uh, wheel cylinder. They come out ever so easy. I'm surprised they're not a bit more, you know, jammed, corroded, but they've uh, everything seems to have freed off really well. Just release it from the clip at the bottom. Do the same with the other side. Just whiz that one out, and then just fit them onto the new axle. Screw everything in. The wheel cylinders on these, this 2013 axle, they're all good. There's no leaks on them, so we're, we're quite happy just swapping these, these hind, these hoses over. Nip them up nice and tight. You haven't got to go too mad. So if I take out these handbrake cables because we don't need them, we've got ones on the car that are really good anyway. So we remove the drum, remove the drums on this one and get that sorted. Right, out with the old. So the new axle, the it must have been out in the rain a bit because the drum's pretty stuck. So what we we'll do is use the two. These are just uh, M8 bolts. We stick them in there on both sides. Just has them up. Just pulls the drum off. through it just pushes them pushes them out and in with the new so here we go let's slide this on in and that's sitting a lot flatter than what the old one did so it was definitely twisted we just get it roughly into place now we've got to lift this up dead level so if you get it on top of the jack get a jack either side and as I'm raising it I've got to try and keep it flat so that it goes in because of the shape of it with the two the main bolted arms with the mountains at the front they they stick out slightly so if it doesn't go in level then it just doesn't sit right as it's going up and into place so gently just a bit either side just keep working it up until it's about lined up and then we can just slide it forward the last little bit give it a little tap there we go straight into place See the bolt coming up.
Well, that's a massive relief because now we know the body's not bent or twisted. I didn't think it was, but that's just gone in lovely. So you saw that was a bit fiddly. At one point, it looked as though the, the body might be twisted because there was a big gap and it, it was never going to fit. And it was all because it wasn't going up dead level. If it goes up rear end down, it's all out of line. So you've got to make sure that you're jacking it up level, slide it into place. Jobs are good. In. Once we've got those bolts up nice and tight, we can then drop the axle down, put the springs in and build it back up. There we go, look. There we go. She's hanging. All right, so now we're here, we can get this brake hose back through. Twist it, only locates in one place. Just there, like that, pops through, and then we can get the sir clip on the back. And tap that down with a, a little tapper, or a big tapper even. <laughs> And then with that, what's up? That's that sorted. That one's lovely. I can pop that off now. Do exactly the same with the other side. Tap that spring clip back down again. Nip that brake line back up. Nice and tight, lovely. Now I can pop those springs back in, so we just rest them in place, get them almost right, and then we'll jack the axle back up again. Jack it up until the shock absorbers come into line with the holes, and we can pop those bolts through. We slide them bolts back in again and whiz them up. And then that'll just hold it all in place. Get them up nice and tight. It's almost looking like a car again. So if you ever wanted to fit lowering springs to one of these Agos, C1s, 107s, it's as easy as just popping these two bolts out, supporting that, that axle and dropping it down. You can pull the two springs out the back, put the lowered springs in and just bolt it back up again. So it's a really easy fix to to put to change the rear springs on these right let's get these rear bakes assembled we've got to get that handbrake cable through first so we're just going to slip that through push the clip in and then just locate its little mounting clip there onto that arm and put the 10 millimeter bolt or little nut back on the top so we'll whip that down so we've got to feed the um, the cable there into its bracket holder at the bottom. That's just on the underside of the arm. One of those either side, so we'll chuck them back up again. Okay, right now we're just going to clean the rust off because it's uh, it's got a bit of corrosion on there, just where that had stuck. It was a bit tight getting that drum off, wasn't it? So we'll give it a buff up. Same again. Let's get the uh, handbrake cable through clip that into place ABS sensor there as well and we'll locate that bracket back on the arm just push it until it clips into place and let's put that one back down again as well so we're getting there now really feel like we're getting somewhere we'll get that ABS sensor in and then we just put that little bolt back in the back now we're going to pull that spring back and pinch it so we can get the shoe on. We'll just feed that back into the shoe clip and feed it round. Now we're going to put this uh, top spring in first. So we'll just feed that in. using the pliers we we'll just pull the little spring across and clip it in
locate it just behind, pull it into place, then we'll get the bottom spring and just feed that back in again, keeping everything forward till we've got all them springs in place. Get your head out of the way, look, blocking the camera. Now we put the little clip through the back, feed it through the hole in the shoe. We'll put the spring over the top of that and then holding it with your finger at the back, you can push the clip over the top in a pair of pliers, twist it round and it'll hold that shoe in place. Can be fiddler, these are always fiddler, there's no two ways about it, brake shoes are a bit fiddler, but you know, it, they're doable, they really are doable, especially if you can see pictures like this where you can actually see how it's laid out it just gives you a, a better idea as to what to, to do so once we've got that is in place now put the clip through the back and we'll pin that side in as well Fiddly fiddler, but we get there. Yeah, it's there somewhere. Just make sure it's the right way up. <laughs> and then we'll try and grab hold of that and just clip it into place. If you want to put a bit of lube behind the brake shoes where they touch the back plate, you can do. It's not essential, but you could just put a little bit on there. Might stop a squeak you that you might get, but it's like I say, it's not it's not really necessary. And there it is. That's that in place there. Now you can just give them a tap and just centralise them. Make sure that they're all central before you put the drum on the top. You'll soon get the feel of it when you put the drum over the top of it. You'll know where's it. You know that it's not sitting quite straight, not in line. We don't have to do the adjuster on this because we're putting them back on exactly how they came off. If you'd replace these shoes, you'd have to wind the adjuster back slightly. Um, but that's all good and clean. And then we'll just slide the drum on the top. Ideally, we just want this to be slightly rubbing, just, just slightly when we turn it. That's what we're hoping for. Just a small amount of friction there, then we know that they are almost adjusted up correctly. So if there's no friction, it's not right. If there's a little bit, it's, it's perfect. We'll just get that centralized now so we can get that little retaining bolt back in again. We'll just put that in just to slide it so that it deadline lines up spot on. Put the little retaining clip in there, screw that in. And that's your brake assembly finished. Weren't too painful, was it? Lovely. Same with the other side, spin that up, that's just the same, it's all gone back together nicely. Now we're just gonna waz these main mounting bolts up, make sure they're tight, then we can bleed the brakes. So let's just pull the little nipples off the off the back of the wheel cylinder, eight millimeter spanner, just crack off the nipple. Now I've got a, a one-way bleeding valve here, so I've got an old milk bottle with this pipe and it's got say a one-way valve on the end of it but I always try and keep the end submerged in the brake fluid and it just stops it draw drawing any air back in so we just pop that onto there and then because I'm on my own I can now whiz round to the brake pedal pump the pedal and you can see the bubbles coming up in the jar there that's just the air coming out of the system I pump that five or six times making sure there's brake fluid in the reservoir under the bonnet and job done nip that back up take it off go around to the other side and we'll do the same there put the little um, nipple back on again so here we go this is the other side same thing again put the pipe on in the bottle and again as I go to the pedal I just pump it with my hand and you can see the bubbles there look at the air coming out of that brake line all that air coming out and as soon as that stops pumping air out we know we've got fluid coming through like I say five or six presses is plenty plenty enough on this system Lovely, and then let's do that nipple back up again. It's always easier with a bit of pipe into a jar, it just makes life so much easier. Pop that off, and we'll put the uh, nipple back on again. And that's that one sorted.
Oh dear, unlucky for some, we've got to put the old wheels back on again <laughs> because them new ones were uh, damaged and yeah, I don't know if I can get another one or try and get it fixed somewhere else, I'm not sure. We'll see, but uh, old wheels back on and let's get it down on the deck. Drop it down, but everything is all straight and true. How superb is that? Really pleased, really, really pleased. Let's just check on this brake fluid again, make sure that it's up to the top of that, uh, well, up to the maximum anyway. Just whip the cap off and have a look. We'll just need to top that up slightly. Bit of dot four brake fluid going in. Be really careful, if you spill any, make sure you clean it up because it does take the paint off. It will just lift the paintwork. But yeah, up to maximum, put the lid back on. Quick white round, lovely. So there we have it, all done. New rear beam put in. We've uh, topped up the brake fluid, we've bled brakes. Everything's great. It's towing, it's, it's driving really straight, it's lovely. We'll get that wheel fixed and put back on again. Uh, and that'll finish it off. But in the meantime, it's fine to go. Uh, if that's been of any use, if you've enjoyed that one, then drop me a thumbs up, like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Hi.